Hello everybody, this is me Mika Villarreal and I'm to do another video in the Mika channel. Here to do a review on Goosebumps Series 1000 Book 24, Earth Geeks Must Go. Now I have a big history with this book. Now before I even like saw the, the I got my hands on this copy, I uh, saw it like uh, you know online and whatever. I was really interested with this book because it involves aliens and before Aliens are probably the best monsters ever because I was really interested in the designs, the looks. I love aliens. I love the body squeezers book. Maybe that's why I want to read this book so much because of the body squeezers. They're just a, such an awesome alien race of species. Anyways, and I, and I finally got my hands on this copy. And what did I think about it? And I did think it was better than Invasion of Body Squeezers Part 1, but still, it kind of is one of those uh, not really that great alien stories. Probably the best alien story in series 1000 is book number 12, and that would have to be Brain Juice. This is probably the best uh, alien story in uh, series 1000, and Goosebumps history coming up after that is uh, Attack of the Jack Lanterns, but yeah. I thought that those two are probably the best uh, alien stories of all time. Spoiler for Attack of the Jack Lanterns, the ending of that book reveals that Jack Lanterns are actually aliens from a different planet, yeah. Anyways, uh, this book is pretty good. I enjoy this. I don't think it's as much as the Body Squeezers book part two and uh, those other two alien books I mentioned, which uh, I bet you already know what that is. But uh, yeah. Anyways, after a bunch of rambling for one minute, I'm no actually telling you about the plot. Let's talk about the plot of Earth Peaks Must Go. Now I won't talk about it too much. It'll be like a spoiler for your review, but uh, I'll say it right now. Um, this book uh, is a uh, very different than the other books. It's kind of like a, a little bit dark in terms of other parts, in terms of other series thousand books. I think this book is a little bit darker than Brain Juice. In my, in my opinion, Brain Juice is much more better than uh, this one because uh, I think Brain Juice did the story a little, a little bit better and I think it's more entertaining than Earth Weeks Must Go. But Earth Weeks Must Go is a fun alien book. So we basically have this kid named Jacob who was uh, ready to go in at 6th grade but uh, there is some um, something weird. All of his classmates are like unfamiliar to him. They they look very different, and uh, we get and he gets introduced, introduced to the teacher, and uh, things got start fine. But then he says the word twelfth grade, which is actually a reference to uh, one. Do Excuse me, guys. That's actually a motorcycle in the back. You, you can hear in the background. Sorry, guys. But yeah, actually, the word twelfth twelfth grade is actually a reference in the Beast from the East uh, when. Um, the Beast uh, says something about Trelth. Uh, I only saw this uh, in the Business Wiki, which uh, which uh, you can actually look it up. But uh, yeah, I think I saw, yeah I checked it out, and uh, there's actually reference uh, to that word being used in Beast from the East. So yeah, maybe uh, maybe that's actually a true fact. I don't know, but yeah. That which if it's true, then that's actually a pretty cool fact. Anyways, um, he's like, um, oh my gosh, what's happening right now? I mean, Jacob. And then uh, when he goes to lunch, this is probably one of the yuckiest parts of the entire book. The aliens eat food through their armpits. Yeah, the aliens eat their foods um, eat food through their armpits. And uh, one of the aliens uh, see Jacob eating food through his mouth, and they're like, "Yeah, what is he doing? Stop it, man!" And then uh, Jacob's all weird, weird out like that, so he runs away to the woods, and he meets. Uh, Another girl named, uh, what's the name of the girl? I think I forgot the name, but yeah. Anyways, um, I forgot the name of the girl even though I read this last night. Yeah. Reread this actually last night because I think I forgot what happened the first uh, time I read this. And uh, anyways, um, they talk about so they talk about um, some stuff and reveal, she reveal, it reveals that um, she is also not like them because she doesn't eat through their armpits. She eats through the mouth, yeah. And then they get attacked by these alien creatures, alien insects, and they're called splatters. Which, fun fact, they're actually originally supposed to be in the Goosebumps movie, the second draft of the script. You can check out that video on the second draft of the script in the channel. It's there in the Goosebumps playlist uh, section. Check it out. Uh, it's a really good video. Some of uh, my uh, fans actually like that video. So anyways, check it out. Anyways, uh, yeah, they're about to get attacked by splatters, and it's actually revealed their weakness is actually whistling, which is... Really hard for me to do it because if, I, if there's a splatter coming to me, it'd be really hard for me to do it because I don't know how to whistle yet. So yeah, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah, they're 
they get attacked, but then they start whistling, whatever, and then they just think, I think they explode, whatever, yeah. And uh, the second half of this book, uh, we get introduced to like this uh, weird like man. man. Man is chasing around the kids, and uh, on fun fact, that man is actually not really... Okay, I won't say anything if that man's a monster or not, but uh, one thing I'll say is that he, he plays an important role in the book, and uh, there's a climax in this uh, book where, they, where they're where they about to be attacked by Splat Dice, and actually, have, that's actually a pretty good climax. Not gonna lie, that's one of the best better climax of the series, that was in my opinion. One of the more better ones, yeah. I was kind of like uh, ready to be reading the, the next chapter because there's a lot of suspense in that part. And then we get to the ending, which is one of the craziest endings of Series 1000. And um, I'll say this, they uh, it may have a connection to Colonel Creeps. Now, now that'd be really shocking, is it? Yeah. Anyways, uh, so, so overall, Earth Geeks must go. Pretty good book. I recommend it for like younger readers. But I don't think like a 13, I don't think a 16 year old or a 17 year old would be really that fascinated with this book. They may say it's probably the worst one. And by the way, that spaceship on the cover doesn't even appear towards like uh, the very end. Spoil alert. Sorry guys, but yeah. Anyways, that's all I can say about Earth Geeks Must Go. The cover, it's pretty good. I like the artwork, but I don't think that's probably one of the most exciting series styles of artwork. So just uh, a guy on a spaceship, which actually doesn't appear towards the very end of the book. Flying towards, I don't know where it is, but yeah. And by the way, the, the tagline is, it looks to be Earth. It's gotta be Earth, but it isn't. That's literally like, um, what the twist ending is actually kind of about. Which, okay, spoiler alert, uh, but <laughs> sorry if you keep spoiling the book, guys, but yeah. And I just said, thank you for watching this video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And, uh, oh, I forgot to give the score for it, Geeks Must Go. Earth Geeks must go, pretty good that read, but I don't think it's something that everyone would actually enjoy. There's some good enjoyments that we have. The climax is actually one of the best parts in the entire book. Overall, Earth Geeks must go, we'll get a... An A out of definitely one of the better ones. Better alien books in series 1000. Um, so yeah. Earth Geeks, mo Earth Geeks must go. What do you guys think about this book? Love it, hate it. Um, I certainly think some... It's a like, not a love, not even a hate, not even a, it's not even mess, it's just a love, a like love, a like only, yeah. Anyways, bye guys, and see you in the next one.